Okie dokie, we're gonna get started. Hi, um, thanks for coming. We're going to use a dish towel or hand towel today. So something that's about this length, um, you can press pause and go get it. Um, this is an all levels class, so as always, I will be adding layers. Um, please stick with the ones that work for you and ignore the ones that don't. Um, same thing with the prop, it's here to help add to the experience and not take away from it. So if it starts to get annoying or it's too much to deal with, don't worry about it. Everything can be done without the prop as well. Okay, we're going to start lying down on our backs. Um, with your towel, you can just lay the towel lengthwise um, on your torso for a moment. Close your eyes. I'm going to go ahead and place my hands on the front of my rib cage. I'm take a couple of deep breaths here, really filling up the lungs forward, sideways, and backwards as I inhale. And allowing the front of my lungs to soften towards my hips as I exhale. Using the gentle weight of my hands here just to notice what's happening in the rib cage. Inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. So if you're trying to fog up a mirror, or your dark leader, or you. And then the next time you exhale, just note how it feels in the front of your rib cage. Can you keep the front of the rib cage pretty much where it is? So softening towards the hips. As you again, inhale and exhale. So in order to do that, we have to send the breath really far back and wide. And there's some engagement in our deep abdominals, our transverse abdominals here, to help keep the front of the rib cage softening towards the hips. As you inhale, check in with how it feels at the back of your rib cage, noticing the weight, especially the base of your ribs. Can you keep that same feeling of weight even as you exhale? So as the rib cage comes closer to itself. Two more breaths just like this. Can you keep the sternum soft? So imagine that your sternum is a piece of chocolate and it's in the sun, it's approximately 70 degrees outside with a little bit of melting there the whole time for the next approximately like 53 minutes. And keeping that softening of the rib cage towards the hips, go ahead and grab onto your towel. Um, depending on your shoulders, you might want to grab pretty wide. My palms are facing towards my knees here. And then all you're going to do is reach the hands behind you and then back up towards the ceiling. Keep going. As you do this, you want to keep a gentle pull of the towel out. So we're engaging through the muscles around the shoulders. And you want to be really active about keeping that softening of the rib cage towards the hips. So heaviness in the back of the rib cage can help. You can also think about placing your bowl of cereal on the base of your rib cage here. You want to keep the cereal from spilling towards your chin here. So most likely, unless you have some of the more, most um, mobile shoulders I've seen, your hands will not touch the, the floor behind you. If they are touching the floor behind you, Check in with the bottom of your ribs. So are they still staying towards the front of the hips? And is the back of your rib cage still softening towards the floor, towards the mat? Keep going. Make the range of motion a little bit bigger. So moving the arms towards the knees and then behind you. Can you add a little bit of rotation? So thinking about the pinky finger reaching a little bit farther forward, a little bit of external rotation in the shoulders here. Checking in with the breath. If it felt helpful to do Darth Vader slash fogging up a mirror, 
Keep that breath, keep the exhale through the mouth, see if that helps to really tune in to how the movement is affecting the breath and the breath is affecting the movement. Great. The next time the hands are behind you, stay there. And then add some gentle rocks in your pelvis. So imagining your bowl of cereal is on the front of your pelvis now, and you're spilling it towards your belly button and then towards your pubic bone. So you're like, hmm, my arms don't feel so great here. You can bring your arms down by your sides or back up towards the ceiling. Just adding that extra challenge here. So keeping the um, stability of your rib cage, the awareness of where your rib cage is, even as your pelvis moves. Great. You keep a gentle pull out on your towel. And then finding center, finding that neutral spine here. So your uh, bowl of cereal on your pelvis is perfectly balanced. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, we're going to go ahead and curl the head, neck, and shoulders up, tap the towel towards your thighs, and then come on back down. Hands can stop on towards the ceiling, or they can come all the way behind the head if that feels good. Getting some extra mobility for the shoulders here. Check in with your elbows as we go as well, making sure that if your arms were hoses, you can spray water from your shoulders all the way out of your knuckles. So we're not kinking the hose at the wrist. Exhaling as you curl, inhaling as you lift. The next time you're up, stay there. Rotate over to the left, come back to center, and then to the right. So how do you keep that same amount of pull out on the towel? Here, yeah. So noticing, it's really obvious when we let our arms move instead of our torso here. So you can feel the towel kind of pulling the opposite hand. So can you keep the center of the towel at your sternum as we go? You can always bring your hands behind your head here if this feels funky on your neck. One more each side. Good, are you breathing? And then come all the way down. Good, bring the towel just onto the front of your pelvis for a moment. Bring your hands down by your sides. Right leg comes up into tabletop. Left leg comes up into tabletop. Check in. Can you take a deep breath in here, and then as you exhale, can you gently weight the back of your ribs towards the mat? Another deep breath in, and as you exhale, can you gently bring the space in between your hip bones down towards the mat as well? Great. Right leg extends out away from you, comes back in. Left leg. Check in with your sternum chocolate. Make sure it's still in 70 degree weather. Really feeling the foot pulling away from the rib cage, away from the belly button as you extend the leg. You can imagine that you have your towel attached to your belly button and your knee, and you're extending, you're um, lengthening the towel, bringing it taut as you extend the leg, and then letting it fold back in as you bend. So there's two directions of motion um, and engagement here. The belly button hugging towards the spine and the knee reaching away from the belly button. Okay. Keep going, check in with the breath. If this is quite enough for you to deal with right now, stick with this. If you'd like a little bit more, the next time the legs are um, both in tabletop, bring the legs together. Gently press the knees and the ankles together, and then extend both legs out, and bend both legs in, and extend. Same thing goes here, so really actively moving in two directions here, using opposition to create stability, to train our bodies to work efficiently. Two more. One more. Keep the legs in tabletop, grab onto your towel, reach it up towards the ceiling. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, curl up, towel taps towards your shins. Good. And then extend your legs, extend the towel above your head. Keep the curl. And tap the towel right below the knees. And extend everything away. Good. Can you pull a little bit more away um, from the towel? And can you keep that rotation in your upper arms? 
So the pinky is a little bit lower, a little bit more towards your knees, yeah, than your um, thumbs. That's the thing you're looking for. Three more. Can you curl up a little bit higher? Can you lower the legs a little bit more as you extend? Can you press into the legs a little bit more? So knees pressing into each other, ankles pressing into each other. For five, three, I lost count, so we're gonna do one more. Ah. And come all the way in. Good. Take a moment here. And then go ahead and bring your towel um, uh, underneath your knees. Great. So I'm placing my knees so that there's like maybe a fist um, width in between them. Great. And then place your feet down on the mat just for a moment. Reset your neutral pelvis. And then bring your legs up into a really modified tabletop. So I'm thinking tabletop with my thighs, with my femurs. My knees are right over my hips. My shins are most definitely not in tabletop because they are hanging on for dear life onto the towel. And then gently pull out. So there's some engagement through the back of the legs to keep the towel in place. You're really pulling in. And then also some engagement in the outer glutes to help stabilize here. Bring your palms down towards the mat and then open them out about 45 degrees away from your torso. Great. Both knees go over towards the left. Right hip bone comes up. Right shoulder blade stays down. Come back to center. Other side. So as you do this, we're trying to keep that even pull on the towel the whole time. Adjusting whenever you need to if it slips. So we've done this before, um, this side to side exercise before with the legs pressed together. We've also done it with a pillow in between the knees. These are all ways of giving ourselves feedback. So making sure that the pelvis is moving. Yeah, and the knees stay in line. So we're getting this nice rotation through the um, lower and kind of beginnings of the mid back, but not all the way up to the ribs, like right at the base of the ribs. Can you press the opposite shoulder blade down as you rotate? Good. For more talent here, knees just need to move a little bit farther away from you. So noticing the temptation here to bring the knees in towards the chest. It's a lot of work isometrically, so without moving in the back of the legs and in the outer glutes. Great. The next time your knees are over towards the left, they stay there. It's a little bit weird, but work with me here. Tap the left toes towards the mat and then lift them up. Again, really small motion. Good. So you're keeping this rotation in the pelvis. Your right shoulder blade is super glued, gorilla glued to the mat. Good. Three more. Ah, cheeky. Two. Last one. Same thing, other side. Reaching the knees over towards the right. Tapping the right toes towards the mat and then back up. Really small motion. Good. Checking in with what's happening in between the hip bones here. Is your sternum chocolate still soft? Are you breathing? What's happening underneath your left shoulder blade? If it was Elmer glue, Elmer's glued, try super gluing it. If it was super glued, try gorilla gluing it. Three. One, bring the knees back to center. Last thing here, hands behind the head. Keep pulling out with the thighs, out with the knees. Curl the head, neck, and shoulders up. Good, little pulses here for 10, for nine, for eight, for seven, for six, for five, for four, three, two, and one. Come on down, bring those knees into your chest. Good, give your legs a little bit of a shake if that feels good. And open and close, whatever your body is asking for right now. And then go ahead and grab onto your towel again. This time we're going to grab it with the palms towards your face. Good. Reset your legs, making sure your heels are just out of your fingertips reach. They're in line with the sit bones. Knees are up towards the ceiling. Great. Great. Go ahead and reach the arms up towards the ceiling here and then back behind the head, just like we did before. Different, right? So the rotation is different in the shoulders, so the range of motion will be different. Most likely a lot smaller, totally fine. 
So noticing what different muscles are working or how the muscles are working differently here. Two more. And then keep the arms up towards the ceiling. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, slowly peel the pelvis up. One vertebra at a time, all the way up into your bridge. Take a moment here. You curl your tailbone under more. So if you had a bowl of cereal still on the front of your pelvis, you're spilling the entire thing right on your face. Just going onto your face. You're curling the tailbone under so much. You have a little bit of a hug of the belly button. And the front of the rib cage is still moving towards the hips, just like we've been working on. Great, arms move behind the head and back up. I'm gonna say forehead instead, because it's more like forehead for me. Yeah, good. And you press down into the whole foot here. So what's happening underneath your big toe, middle toe, third toe, fourth toe, pinky toe. Oh, and the second toe also, sorry, second toe. Everything here, pressing down. And then can you also add some pressure through the heels? Adding on, lowering the hips as the hands move towards the forehead. Lifting them up. Good. So halfway lower. Exhale, lift. Hinging now. So there's a slight fold in the front of the hips. What's happening to your sternum top leg? Maybe we're here for five. For four. Taking a break with the arms whenever you need to. Three. We're gonna stay up in the bridge in two. Stay up in the bridge now. Great, from here, if you'd like more challenge, shift your weight to your right leg, float your left leg up. Switch. So pressing down with the left leg to float the right leg up. Good, one more time each side, keep that switch. Notice what's happening in between the shoulder blades. Can you keep the weight even there? and making sure the hip bones stay parallel to the ceiling. Great, you can stick with this. If you want more challenge though, you'll shift your weight to your right leg, float the left leg up. Make sure the hip bones are even. Good, left leg will stay bent or you can extend it up towards the ceiling. Good, and then we're going to bend the, the elbows here and straighten. Keep the upper arms um, perpendicular to the floor. So as I'm bending the elbows, my forearms are coming towards my face and they're coming back up. Good. Yes, there's a lot of work also in the back of the right leg here. But we're finding stillness in the lower body, a really active stillness. So we're still constantly checking in what's happening in between the hip bones. Can you curl the tailbone under a little bit more? Can you press down through the right heel a little bit more? We're here for four, three, two, Arms stay long on one, lower the hips an inch, lift them up for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Left leg comes down, roll all the way down. Give your arms a little shake. We'll do the other side. Yay! Towels are so fun, props are so fun. Okay, arms come back up towards the ceiling. As you exhale, curl the tailbone under, peel the spine slowly up. Starting with the marches again. So shifting the weight to the left leg, floating the right leg up, and switching. Really pressing down through the right heel, float the left leg up. Magic. Keep going. Good. Can you keep that active pull away from the towel with the hands? You can really decide on the amount of work here. The more you pull, the more challenging it'll be. But working to at least keep the towel taut the whole time. Check in with your breath, your jaw. The next time the right leg is up, it stays there. Extend it up towards the ceiling if you'd like, and then bend the elbows and straighten. So a lot of work also for the forearms. We're holding a grip for a long time. So we're strengthening the muscles that help to support the wrist, which is also super important. If you know you carry heavy things or type on a keyboard, it's really great to have extra support 
for all of those muscles that help our hands be so um, agile. Three more. We're breathing two. Keep pulling out on one. Arms stay up towards the ceiling, lower the hips an inch, lift them up for 10. Nine, uh, is your right hip bone lower than your left? You think about pulling the um, right toes up towards the ceiling a little bit more to even out. We're here for five. Pressing down through the left heel. Three, two, and one. Right leg comes down, roll all the way down. Great, last thing here, go ahead and let that towel just fall onto your torso. Arms come down by your sides. Roll yourself all the way up into your bridge. Good. We're just going to take some typewriter swipes here. So thinking about both hip bones staying even towards the ceiling, shift the hips over towards the right and then towards the left. So it's like you're pressing the side of your hips towards the right and then you're pressing your right hip bone towards the left. Good. Just adding some motion. You should feel a nice, um, you should feel the place where this articulation is happening in your spine. Just getting some motion here. And then roll down about two vertebra, same thing. Noticing how the place where the articulation is happening changes. Good. Keeping the knees reaching away from you evenly. So there's some um, articulation through the hip joint here as well. Two more vertebra, side to side. Using this also as a time to catch your breath. Refog the mirror. Roll almost all the way down, side to side. Just like you're gently cleaning your mat with your butt. Great, and then roll all the way down. Bring the knees into the chest for a moment here. Just give yourself a hug and gently rock from side to side. Great, now when you're ready, rock yourself all the way up to sitting. Um, just set this towel off to the side for now. Great. We're going to find a mermaid position. You have a lot of options here. So the traditional mermaid, um, my right leg is bent with my heel towards my, my glute. My left leg is out in front of me. If that feels funky for you, adjust. Or adjust by just crossing your legs. Okay. I'm going to bring the arms out to the side. And then bring the left hand down towards the mat. Right hand reaches up towards the ceiling and then goes over the head. You can let the left elbow bend just a little bit. And then come back up. Good. Think about what's happening underneath your right sit bone here. So it probably won't be touching the ground depending on your hips. Totally fine. But we want to keep that space the same. So making sure that we're not lifting up the right hip bone like this, as, or at the right sit bone like that, as you reach over. So this is much more of a candy cane kind of motion, kind of like that, than it is a C curve. So thinking about as you reach over towards the left, actually lifting the right side of the ribcage up towards the ceiling a little bit more. Good. The next time you're over towards the left, stay there. Thread the right hand underneath the left, and then open back out again. Again, what's happening with your right sit bone? Can it get a little bit heavier? Thinking about the rib cage rotating towards the left, towards the ceiling. Two more. Last one. And then take one last moment to stretch on this side. If the twist feels good, go ahead and place that right hand down. Or if that arc over felt good, just return to that. And let your eyes close. Just take a couple of deep breaths into the right side of your rib cage, wherever you are. Great. Come back up. Swing the legs around. Same thing, other side. We're going somewhere with this, I promise. But also, it's nice to take a stretch. We don't need an excuse for that. I'm going to bring the left hand up, the right hand down, reaching the left hand over the head and then towards the wall and then back up. So this side, what's happening underneath the left sit bone? Can you make the left sit bone feel even heavier, like it's getting pulled down towards the ground as you arc over? The left side of your rib cage is reaching up towards the ceiling as you arc over. 
So you're creating that candy cane shape as opposed to the C curve. I, this is a kind of an odd and out, um, image, but I like to think about my left sit bone getting um, grabbed by a plunger kind of underneath the ground. And it's going and pulling the sit bone down as I arc over. So adding that extra bit of opposition to create more stretch, more stability here. Right there. Great. Okay, stay arced over this time. Her, um, send the left hand underneath the right, rotate, and then open back up again. Good. Your left sit bone is still attached to the plunger. The same space that we talk about in sideline, that space in between your left, the left side of your rib cage and the left hip bone, that's applicable here as well. So you're creating more space in between your ribs and your hip by making the left sit bone heavier. By reaching the left side of the ribcage up towards the ceiling. Great, and then take one last moment here to stretch where you need it, staying rotated or opening back up. Deep breaths. Two more breaths in and out. One more breath. And then come all the way up. Okay. We grab onto your towel again. We're gonna start with the um, legs about halfway bent. You can adjust as we go here. Um, if you have a friend or a couch, you can always tuck the toes underneath the couch or have your friend press down on your feet um, as we go or as you revisit this exercise. Um, it's an adaption of the short box series for the mat, which is amazing and challenging and all the shakes, which is wonderful. We're using the towel here to help add to the challenge and to help stabilize through the um, shoulders and the shoulder blades. So use it if it's helpful, don't use it if it's not. All right, um, we're gonna bring the towel out in front of you for a moment. Press down into the sit bone. So find a place where you can do that. If you need to bend your knees more, widen your legs, or lengthen the legs all the way out. Great, gentle pull out. Press the belly button towards the spine a little bit more. Press the sit bones down towards the mat. So find a long neutral spine. Great. Reach the head so far away from the pelvis here that you find a gentle hinge. Good, come on back. Keep going here, really small. If you feel this in your lower back, you have begun to arch. So use that information. Think about hugging the belly button towards the spine a little bit more. And I won't tell anyone, but add just a little curve of the pelvis. So really work, working to protect the lower back. Good. You can do any of this in a curl if that feels better for you. It's also gonna be helpful to think about that front of the rib cage moving down towards the hips. The back of the rib cage moving slightly back. Feeling okay, you bring your arms above your head. Keep that pull outward with the towel. Good. So, some nice work in the lower abdominals here. I'm really not moving very far. We start to move really far back in a hinge. It tends to go straight to the hip flexors, which it will use, you'll be using your hip flexors here as anatomy. But we're trying to get most of the work in the lower abdominals. Good. So going back only as, um, to that point where you feel that extra little bit of hub in the lower abdominals in our transverse. Great. The next time you're in your hinge, you'll stay there. Lower the arms and lift. Great. Can you think about pulling the rib cage away from the pelvis a little bit more? Or I like to think about a very helpful elk grabbing the tops of my ears and literally pulling my head up towards the ceiling. Good. Three more. We're breathing. Two more. Check in with the front of the rib cage as the arms lift. Can you still breathe? Can you still fog up a mirror? Last one. Great. Come all the way up. And we go back again. This time, arms can stay in front of you. More challenge. Arms come above the head. We're going to rotate over to the right. Come back to center and then to the left. You can get a lot of work here, a lot of challenge, without moving very far back. Good. Good. 
at what's happening in the front of the rib cage. Can you think about actually pulling outwards slightly with the legs? Like you have the towel behind your knees here again. Oh, does that help stabilize your pelvis? One more each side. Short box series. Grant, um, guaranteed to make you feel taller once you stand back up. All right, even yourself back up. Come back up. This next little bit here, we're going to use that idea of the mermaid, of the opening of the side of the rib cage. Um, I want you to think about your towel as a fishing pole, and there's a spear on the other side, and there's two ponds just right behind you. This is going to make sense in a second. Okay, so we're going to find that hinge again. Arms are above the head. Rotate over to the right. Spear of fish here. So we're going to arc over towards the right, keeping that rotation. You're um, aiming for that right pond, good, and the left side of your rib cage is opening up towards the ceiling. You're still rotated. Great. Um, Un-arc. So you're rotated, hinged, but not arced. And then go over towards the left. Great. So we're hinged back, we're rotating towards the left, and then we're going to spear that imaginary fish or wave to it, tap it, just say hi, good morning, wake up, and then come back up, rotate. We're going to stay in the hinge as you go from side to side. Good, so three separate motions, arcing, rotating, and hinging. Good, really focusing as you arc, as you wake up your fish, um, on opening that opposite side of the rib cage as much as you can. But check in with the shoulder, making sure that the opening of the rib cage isn't happening because you're lifting the shoulder. Spanning out here, one more each side. Good, can you hug the lower abdominals in a little bit more? Give your hip flexors some help. Good, stay in that hinge. Pull out with the towel, find that rotation in the upper arms. Lower back an inch, come back up an inch. Lower back, come back up. Good, can you find your elf pulling your ears away from your pelvis? Hi, oh, you can hear the shaky leg voice, here we go. Are you still breathing? Can you send the breath to the back of the ribcage? Can you hug the belly in a little bit more? Can you soften the front of the ribcage? Can you soften your sternum? Three, two, and one. Come all the way up. Great. Take a moment here. I like to send my knees from side to side if that feels good. Good, or fold over the legs. We're gonna make our way over to our side here. If you have um, sensitive knees, this is a really great time to take your mat and fold it in half so you can put your knee on a little bit more padding. Great, we're gonna continue our, um, our short box series. So, great, so we're gonna find kneeling. You're gonna bring your left hand down, left knee down, right leg extends. Great, grab onto your towel and make your way, I lied, I said left hand down, but we're gonna come all the way up to um, kneeling here. Good. Great, bring your towel out in front of you and then above your head. Hopefully it's not cut off, we'll find out, but it's above my head, okay. Good, can you drop the shoulders here? Can you let the pinkies come a little bit farther forward? Good. So for me, for my um, shoulders, you can, if, you, if you looked at me from above, my arms are a little bit in front of my head. If I do this, then I end up like this. Great, okay, from here, you're gonna find that same reach of the ears away from the pelvis, and then arc over towards the left. Will you go far? Probably not, that's okay. Coming back up, good, keep going. If this starts to feel pinchy or grabby in your right hip flexor, try to bring your right leg a little bit farther forward so it's in your peripheral vision. Good, same arcing feeling that we had before. So opening up the right side of the rib cage. Dropping the shoulders, softening the front of the ribcage down. Ooh. Hi, obliques. Thanks for joining. Great. Keeping that active pull on the towel here too. Good, making sure that the towel isn't doing the work for you or isn't moving, so we're not doing this one. I didn't feel it at all. I don't know what's happening. You're gonna try and keep the center of the towel in the um, right above your head the whole time. Okay, I'm being silly, I'm stupid, but okay, we're gonna go with that and I'm gonna stop talking about that. 
The next time you're arched over towards the left, stay there. Good. Can you lengthen now? So finding a long line from your right foot to your head, and then arch over again. Ooh. And then lengthen. And over. Ha, 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 ha. Taking a break when you need to. Good. Three. Last one. Don't worry, one more thing, but we're gonna take a moment here. You can shake out the shoulders, give yourself a shimmy. This is challenging, I know. Okay, arms come up, last bit. Arcing over, good. And then find that length. Stay in that lengthened position, rotate the chest forward towards the mat and back up. We did this in Mermaid. It was a lot more comfortable there. We were working on different things, but that same rotation here without including the pelvis. I like to think of myself as a corn on the cob on a spit. And I'm getting gently roasted from my left side to my front. Good. Three, two. Can you lower down a little bit more? Last one. Great. Left hand comes down. Set the towel down. Last little bit on this side. Left hand is down. Right hand is up towards the ceiling. You guessed it. Left hand, left foot comes behind the right. Hi, side plank, nice to see you. We're gonna just take a brief visit. Not coming over for a meal, just a cup of tea. Deep breaths in and out here. Can you use all that stability that we've been working on in the shoulders with the towel here? So can you find that rotation in the upper arms? Good. I'm saying good, because I bet you just found it. Can't actually see you. Okay, three more. Breaths in and out here. Check with what's happening in your right hip bone. Are your hips stacked? Last deep breath in and out. Great. Left knee down, right knee down. Good. Go ahead and find a child's pose here. So walk your hands out in front of you. And then walk your hands over to the left, taking a stretch. You can also just take an arm over to Two more breaths. Still fogging up the mirror. Great, come up to seated. Before we go over to the other side, grab onto your towel um, behind you, palms are up towards the ceiling, and just uh, walk your hands pretty close together. Straighten your arms. Let your shoulders fall down your back and just let take a big head circle over towards the right. And then to the left. So using the towel behind you to help um, open up the pecs a little bit. And allow you to pull the shoulders away from the ears. One more moment. Are you still breathing here? starting kneeling on my right um, knee here. Grab onto your towel, should you care to keep it involved. Good, find that little bit of rotation in the upper arms here. Arms come behind the head, above the head, towards the forehead. There we go, we made it. Good, find that gentle hug of the belly button in, soften the ribcage towards the hips, and find your arc over. And then come back up, keep going. Just scooch over a bit. Good. As always, don't do this with the towel if it doesn't feel good. The, the prop is here to add work, to add awareness, and a little bit of entertainment too, I admit. But mostly to add awareness. So we're targeting the muscles that we want to target that are sometimes harder to um, access without a prop. But if it's not helping you do that, then it's not serving its purpose. And you can just sit down. It's not offended. I'm not offended. Good. Making sure that the top of the head stays right smack in the middle of that towel. You're actively reaching the left side of the rib cage up towards the ceiling as you arc over. Left foot can always come a little bit farther in front of you if you feel this really heavy in the left hip flexor. Two more. Last one. Great, this time you 
go over, you find length. So head approximately in line with the left foot, and then arc over, and then find length, and then arc over. Good. You can feel like your right hand is pulling your left, and then your left hand is pulling your right. Good. We're breathing. You're softening the sternum, believe it or not, right here. You're making whatever faces you need to for three, for two. Last one. Come all the way up. Take a moment. Shake it out. Last little bit here. We have our core on the curl. Hands up. Arcing over. And then finding that length. Rotating the chest towards the ground. And then back open. And rotating. More challenge here. All you have to do is lower the torso a little bit more towards the ground. Less challenge. Lift the torso up a little bit more. Good. And change the position of your arms. Here for four. Three. Two. What's happening with your left shoulder? Can you drop it down your back a little bit? Last one. Great. Towel comes down. Right hand comes down. Left hand comes up. Right foot comes behind the left. Side plank. Again, checking in. Can you now stabilize differently? in the right shoulder. Can you still feel that pull, those two elves at the top of your ears away from your pelvis? Good. I imagine there was a great change there. Good job. Soften the front of the rib cage down. Stack the hip bones. Deep breaths into the back of the rib cage. Where are you holding tension that you don't need it here? Maybe in your jaw, or your left ankle. Can you soften there and bring the work more into the right side of your waist, into the right shoulder girdle? Two more deep breaths here. One more deep breath in. And out. Great. Come all the way down. Find that child's pose if that felt good, and then walk your hands over to the right. No, over to the, yes, that's the right. I figured it out, okay. <laughs> or arc over towards the right here. Mm -mm. Yes, yes, to the right. <laughs> you have a long, longer thought than, think. okay, two more deep breaths, wherever you are. And then make your way um, onto your stomach here. Take your towel and bring it behind your back, so lengthwise. Um, just kind of across your low back or your sacrum. Just let it hang out there for a moment. Stack your hands underneath your forehead. If that feels comfortable, you can also place a pillow or a cheek down on the mat. I'm gonna keep my head facing you just so that my voice reaches the mic, but you'll be looking down here. Take a moment to set up. Press the pubic bone down into the mat. Lift the belly button up away from the mat. It can be helpful here to actually take your hands and press the sacrum towards your heel. So feel that tactile feedback here, that lift, automatic lift of the belly button up and the pubic bone down when you press your sacrum towards your heels. Replace your hands. Great. Your right foot is going to pull so far away from your pelvis here that the right leg floats slightly off of the mat. Take a moment here. As your weight shifted on your pelvis, can you lift the belly button up a little bit more? Like there's a little thimble underneath your belly button. You want to stay away from it. It's ceramic, so it'll get crushed. It's China. Can you say it's, it's ceramic? Okay. Anyway, you're going to lift your right leg up one inch and lower one inch and up and lower. Actively pulling the foot away from the pelvis here. Like you're trying to create space in the hip joint. You actually are creating space in the hip joint. Good, four more here. Three more, what's happening with your thimble? Can you press the pubic bone down a little bit more? Good, the next time you're lifted, stay there. 
externally rotate the leg, and then find parallel. Externally rotate, and find parallel. Good, we're here for five. I'm looking for like five sheets of paper underneath your thigh, not more than that. Maybe even just one, that's totally fine. Last two, last one. Keep that external rotation, little pulses up towards the ceiling. Can you pull your foot away from the pelvis just a little bit more? What's happening in your sternum here? Can you still think about softening the front of the rib cage towards the hips here? Good. Is your right knee lengthened? Is the lift coming from the glutes or is it coming from the knee? The knee's really smart here and it wants to take over. We want the work though in the glutes to keep the leg long and pulling. We're here for five, four, three, two, and one. Let that right leg fall. Same thing, other side. Pull the left foot so far away from the pelvis that it lifts up. And then lift it one inch up and one inch down, keeping it parallel here. Checking in with the symbol every time you lift the leg. So can you lift the belly button? And also that space in between the hip bones every time you lift the left leg. So the pubic bone presses down more and there's extra lift in the thigh and extra lift in the belly. We're still doing this. Here for four. Here three. What's happening in your shoulders here? Are they trying to lift your leg for you? Very thoughtful of them, but really not gonna work. Last two. Last one, externally rotate the left leg and then find parallel. Good, has your weight shifted over towards the left here? So can you keep the hip bones pretty even towards the mat? So we're using that work of the obliques that we worked on in kneeling to help stabilize here. So because we're working with one side, our obliques are automatically um, in, in the situation. So using them here to help keep the pelvis stable. Good, three more. Is your knee trying to move? Last one, stay externally rotated, lift and lower. Can you press the pubic bone down a little bit more? Can you soften the, the sternum? The shoulders. We're still breathing. Thinking about the thigh lifting, so five sheets of paper, seven sheets of paper. Five sheets of paper, seven sheets of paper. Good, for four, for three, for two. Last one, let the legs fall. Great, bring your forehead to mat. Grab your towel here. And then go ahead and grab the towel um, with the palms up. Straighten the arms. And walk your hands just a little bit farther in so you're feeling like the towel is helping you to open your pecs here, open your shoulders. Good. So pull outwards on the towel here and that should help roll the shoulders back away from the mat. Good. Pull your knuckles towards your hips. Good. And then just lift and lower the arms from here, like two inches in each direction. So we're hopefully getting some nice stretch in the front of the pecs here, and a lot of work in between the shoulder blades. If you feel this in your upper traps, it's probably because your shoulders have crept towards your ears. So actively trying to pull your hands past your glutes, Trying to touch your heels with your knuckles. Good. Can you make the range of motion a little bit bigger here? If that feels good. Good. We're here for three. For two. Last one. Good. Keep your hands on the um, towel, but just let yourself rest for a moment. Great. Press the pubic bone down. Find a gentle arch here with the, the head, neck, and shoulders. Good, my sternum is just slightly off of the mat. Great, pull away from the towel with the hands and then lift the hands up about three inches. Good, look to the right, look down, and then to the left, come back to center. And then left, down, and right, back to center. Keep going here. You can add a little bit more arch here by pulling the hands away from the ears. So you're giving yourself a little bit of a stretch, hopefully, here. 
through the neck sensors, through the upper traps. Then there's also a ton of work happening in the mid back, in between the shoulders. Good. If you want more challenge here, last moment, lift both legs up. Keep going with the head. Next time you're even with the head, lift the arms up as high as you can. Lower back to the hips. Lift and lower for three. What's happening to your thimble? Can you lift your belly button up? Can you pull your feet away from your hips a little bit more? Last two. Last one. Good, let that all come down. Set the towel off to the side. Come up onto hands and knees, tuck the toes. Send the hips up towards the ceiling. Find a downward dog. You can also find a child's pose here if that feels better. Just take a moment to pedal out the feet, really drop the head. Bend one knee more than the other and switch, so giving yourself a little bit of a twist. And then walk your hands to your feet. Bend your knees, slowly roll all the way up to standing. probably won't see my head here, that's fine. It's still attached to my body, I promise. Okay, from here, if you are on a hard wooden floor kind of surface, go ahead and fold your mat in half. If you're on carpet, um, pause me, and grab a really thin book or a paper plate. Um, we're gonna take our towel and just place it to the side of our mat. So my right foot is on the towel, my left foot is on the mat. We're gonna put some of the stuff that we worked on today together and use our, mat, our towel as a slider. Okay, so shift the weight into the left leg here. Find a gentle bend in the left knee just to make sure that we're not locking back. Great. Just to start, we're gonna lift the right hip bone up towards the rib cage and then lower it back even towards the, in line with the left hip. Lift it and lower. So, we're actually creating that length in between the left hip bone and the left side of the rib cage as you lift the right hip bone. You can put your hand there to feel it. So when we're lying down on our side, it's a similar action when we're pulling that foot away from the ribs. Good. Great, keep that soft bend in the left knee. Good, and then place the right foot down onto the slider, onto our towel. Bend the left knee, slide out, and come on back in. Good. We're thinking of a, kind of like a one-legged squat here, so the torso can come slightly forward, the sit bones reach back. Good. I want you to think about that feeling that we had when the towel was behind our knees. We are actively pulling the towel out. So the outside of the left hip was working, or both hips were working really hard there. So working to keep the left knee tracking over the second and third toes by engaging through the outside of the left glute. And then using the obliques here, so all of that work that we did um, in kneeling to help keep the space in between the hip bones and the rib cage the same now, even as you move the legs. That same lift that we used in our short box series where the elf was pulling the ears away from the pelvis is also in action here. Like someone is pulling, has grabbed your rib cage and is pulling it away from your pelvis. Careful there though, because the tendency there is then to lose the front of the ribs. So finding that softening still in the front of the rib cage. Basically everything we've talked about today. Good, two more. Stay down. Good, can you keep all that stability, all that length in the torso and that stability in the left glute? Can you bring the right leg forward to the side and then back? Good. Side and forward. Good. What's happening in the width and the collarbones? Can you feel that same width that we had lying down on our stomach and pulling the arms out behind us? Keeping that length in between the right hip bone and the, the right side of the ribs. Good. The next time the right leg is out, it stays there. Lower the hips an inch. Lift them up. Last little bit here for five. Good. Is your belly button hugging in? Do you still have that length in the spine? 
that pull of the left thigh, the left glute out to keep the knee stable. We're here for four, for three, for two, and one. Come all the way up, shake out that left leg. Same thing, other side. You can turn away from me. I'm just gonna move my mat to the other side. So we're standing on our right leg. Left foot is on your towel. Starting by lifting the left hip bone towards the left side of the rib cage and back down. Keep okay. keeping a soft bend in the right knee here. So allow um, with that, letting your weight actually move a little bit more towards your heel. So think about pressing your heel down here to lift up with the left hip bone. So right heel presses down, the left hip bone lifts up. It's like you're pushing down with the right foot and pulling with the left. Okay. We keep our sternum soft here. And then keep the hip bones even. Bend the right knee, slide the left leg out, and come back in. So checking in here, is the left knee tracking over the second and third toes? Are my hip bones staying even towards the front, but also towards or in relation to my rib cage? So my waist is long. I'm actively pulling my pelvis and my ribs away from each other while keeping that softening towards the front of the hips with the front of the rib cage. Good. And gently pulling, um, pressing out just a little bit with the, that right knee to help keep the right glutes, especially that glute med, engaged here. Three more. Two more. Noticing the temptation to shorten the space in between your right hip bone and the right side of your rib cage as you bend the right knee. Good, stay down. Left foot goes forward. Left foot comes down, side. And then left foot goes back. Left foot comes back. Good, keep going. Good. Also remembering when we were in bridge, we were talking about, I was blabbering, about um, making sure the whole foot is pressing down. So the space underneath all five toes, the whole ball of the right foot and the heel are all pressing down here. We're breathing. Good, one more time to the back, to the side, little pulses down and down and down. Good. What's happening in between the right hip bone and the right side of the ribs? For five, four, three, two, and one. Stand all the way up. Good, just take one last moment here and close your eyes. Deep breaths into the back of the rib cage. Take a big roll of the shoulders forward, back and down. And then back forward and down. Okay. Reach the arms up towards the ceiling. Pull the fingers away from the feet, the head away from the pelvis, the ribs away from the pelvis. Good, soften the sternum and then keep that length. Slowly let the arms fall out to the side and down to your side. Great, one last deep breath in here and out. And we're all done. That's all folks. Um, thank you so much for joining me and sticking around the whole time. You're awesome. Um, I will, our next class will be on Sunday at 11, still live and I'll keep posting or sharing these videos on Wednesdays. Um, today, if you um, are in a comfortable position to contribute for class, um, I highly um, suggest, I hope, that instead you'll donate um, to the National Bailout Collective and their member or, and or their member organization, um, the Gilda Papoos Collective, or the Women for Political Change Mutual Aid Project. Um, if you're not able to donate, that's fine, of course, um, but I still would highly recommend, or I, I hope, that you'll still research these organizations. They're all doing really incredible um, work, and they're doing it um, in different ways. It's really important for us to learn about. Um, that's it. If you have any questions, please reach out, um, and 